Hi everyone, I'm doing this video because I spoke to one of my very good friends, Mina, this morning who asked me what exactly it was that led me away from Islam. I have actually highlighted quite a few verses from the Quran and there's actually quite a lot, so I won't actually comment on all of them but I will read all the ones that I have highlighted and the first verse is from Surah Al-Baqarah it is verse 216 and it says Jihad, holy fighting in Allah's cause is ordained for you Muslims though you dislike it and it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you like a thing which is bad for you Allah knows but you do not know the second one is from Surah An-Nisa it is verse 89 it says they wish that you reject faith as they have rejected faith and thus that you all become equal like one another so take not protectors or friends from them till they emigrate in the way of Allah to Muhammad but if they turn back from Islam take hold of them and kill them wherever you find them and take neither prote protectors or friends nor helpers from them and the next one is from the same surah it is surah anisa uh, verse 95 it says not equal are those of the believers who sit at home except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame and those who strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives Allah has preferred in grades those who strive hard and fight with their wealth and their lives to those who sit at home to each Allah has promised good paradise but Allah has preferred those who strive hard and fight to those who sit at home by a huge reward I feel like this verse criticizes peaceful Muslims in a sense who don't join in on the fighting um, I feel like Allah is letting them know that they are less worthy if that makes sense and I feel like this verse sort of demolishes the myth of it's not fighting it's just an internal struggle which I don't think is the case so the next one is did I miss any? no I didn't so the next one is from Surah Al-Anfal it is verse 12 it says remember when your Lord revealed to the angels verily I am with you so keep firm those who have believed I will cast terror into the hearts of those who have disbelieved so strike them over the necks and smite over all their fingers and toes okay. so the next one is from the same surah Al Anfal it is verse 39 it says and fight them until there is no more fitna which is disbelief and the religion worship yep and the religion worship will all be for Allah alone it continues but if they cease worshiping other others besides Allah then certainly Allah is all seer of what they do sorry I'm trying to find the pages okay the next one is from the same surah it is verse 65 it says O Prophet Muhammad urge the believers to fight if there are 20 steadfast persons among you they will overcome 200 and if there be a hundred steadfast persons they will overcome a thousand of those who disbelieve because they the disbelievers are a people who do not understand so this next one is from Surah at Tauba it is verse 5 it says then when the sacred months have passed then kill the mushrikun 
wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them, and lie in wait for them in every ambush. But if they repent and accept Islamic monotheism and perform a salat, the prayers, and give zakat, which is charity, then leave their way free. Verily, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. This one's from the same surah. It is verse 29. Fight against those who believe not in Allah, nor in the last day, nor forbid that which has been forbidden by Allah and his messenger Muhammad, and those who acknowledge not the religion of truth, which is Islam, among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Uh, so according to this verse, uh, Jews and Christians are to be subdued violently. And the next one is from the same surah. It's verse 32. They, the disbelievers, yep, the Jews and the Christians, want to extinguish Allah's light with which Muhammad has been sent with their mouths, but Allah will not allow except that his light should be perfected even though the kafirun, the disbelievers, hate it. It is he who has, who has sent his messenger Muhammad with guides and the religion of truth, Islam, to make it superior over all religions even though the mushrikun hate it. The next one is the same surah, verse 38 and 39. O you who believe, what is the matter with you that when you are asked to march forth in the cause of Allah, jihad, you cling heavily to the earth? Are you pleased with the life of this world rather than the hereafter? But little is the employment of the life of this world as compared to the hereafter. If you march not forth, he will punish you with a painful torment and will replace you by another people and you cannot harm him at all. And Allah is able to do all things. I feel like this verse is warning those who are refusing to fight pretty much. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is getting dry again. Same surah, verse 73. O Prophet Muhammad, strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites, and be harsh against them. Their abode is hell, and worst indeed is that destination. Same surah, which is at Tauba. Verse 111 Verily, Allah has purchased of the believers their lives and their properties for the price that theirs shall be paradise. They fight in Allah's cause, so they kill others and are killed. It is a promise in truth which is binding on him in the Taurat, Torah, and the Injil, Gospel, and the Quran, and who is truer to his covenant than Allah, then rejoice in the bargain which you have concluded. That is the supreme success. So how does Allah actually define a true believer here? Same surah, verse 123. O you who believe, fight those of the disbelievers who are close to you, and let them find harshness in you, and know that Allah is with those who are, who are al-mutakun, which means the pious. Okay, we're going to skip a few chapters. Surah 
So this is from Surah al ahzab It is verse 60 to 62. If the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease, evil desires for illegal sex, and those who spread false news among the people in al Medina stop not, we shall certainly let you overpower them. Then they will not be able to stay in it as your neighbours but a little while. Accursed, they shall be seized wherever found and killed with a terrible slaughter. That was the way of Allah in the case of those who passed away of old, and you will not find any change in the way of Allah. I feel like this verse, and if you sort of read the top, it's sort of sanctioning slaughter for three types of people, and I think it sanctions slaughter for those who are pretty much speaking against Islam in general. Um, I'm going to include as well Jews and Christians and also the hypocrites, so people who are calling themselves Muslim but don't really act it and don't really fight as they're obligated to. This verse is from Surah Muhammad. It is a long one. Um, it is verse 1 to 4. Those who disbelieve in the oneness of Allah and in the message of Prophet Muhammad and hinder men from the path of Allah, he will render their deeds vain. But those who believe and do righteous good deeds and believe in that which is sent down to Muhammad, for it is the truth from their Lord, he will expiate, <coughs> sorry, expiate from them their sins and will make good their state. That is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood, while those who believe follow the truth from their Lord. Thus does Allah set forth for mankind their parables. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you meet in jihad, those who disbelieve smite their necks till when you have killed and wounded many of them, then bind a bond firmly. Thereafter, either for generosity or ransom, until the war lays down its burden. Thus, you are ordered by Allah to continue in carrying out jihad against the disbelievers, till they embrace Islam and are saved from the punishment in the hellfire, or at least come under your protection. <clears throat> but if it had been Allah's will, he himself could carry... Oh, Sorry, he himself could certainly have punished them without you. But he lets you fight in order to test some of you with others. But those who are killed in the way of Allah, he will never let their deeds be lost. Oh, so I feel like this long, or these few long verses... I feel like their like holy war is to be pursu uh, pursued against those who actually reject Allah uh, and for unbelievers to be wounded and well killed. Same surah, Surah Muhammad, verse thirty five and thirty six. So, be not weak and ask not for peace from the enemies of Islam. While you are having the upper hand, Allah is with you and he will never decrease the reward of your good deeds. The life of this world is but play and pastime. But if you believe in the oneness of Allah and fear Allah and avoid evil, he will grant you your wages and will not ask you your wealth. I just kind of find this verse a bit funny. <clears throat> because Allah talks about, you know, slaughter and killing, and yet he says here, but if you avoid evil, um, so if killing really is not evil, 
than what is. This is from uh, the 48th Surah, verse 29. <clears throat> Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers disbelievers, sorry, and merciful among themselves. You see them bowing and falling down pro down prostrate in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah and his good pleasure. The mark of them of their faith is on their faces from the traces of prostration during prayers. This is their description in the Torah, but their description in the gospel is like a sown seed which sends forth its shoot then makes it strong and becomes thick and it stands straight on its stem, delighting the sowers, that he may enrage the disbelievers with them. Allah has promised those among sorry, among them who believe and do righteous good deeds, forgiveness and a mighty reward. I think from this verse it's pretty obvious that Islam is not about treating everyone equally. This is from Surah Asaf, verse 4. Verily, Allah loves those who fight in his cause in rows as if they were a solid structure. Allah loves those who fight. Religion of peace, indeed. Same surah, verse 10 to 12. Oh, oh, you who believe, shall I guide you to a trade that will save you from a painful torment? That you believe in Allah and his messenger Muhammad, and that you strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your lives that will be better for you if you but know if you do so he will forgive you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow and pleasant dwellings in Eden paradise and pleasant dwellings in Eden that is indeed the great success to the last one yes it is surah at tahrim verse 9 and this is the last one o prophet muhammad strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be severe against them their abode will be hell and worst indeed is that destination so this verse sort of includes, not sort of, it does, includes Muslims who do not act as such, the hypocrites. So not only are these verses talking about Christians and Jews and dis, uh, unbelievers, not disbelievers, it's also, it, it also includes the hypocrites, the Muslims who call themselves Muslim but aren't as such so that is those are the verses that I have highlighted and that I deem important in why I left Islam there are many others of course but I also didn't include in this video any hadith because I wanted to soon, maybe in a couple of days, do a video as well on the differences between what Yeshua taught and what Muhammad taught. And yes, I also haven't forgotten, I need to do my second part of the testimony, but yeah, I will. So after all this reading, um, what, hmm. 
there are Muslims who say that Islam means peace and that Islam is a peaceful religion. I have to strongly disagree with that. Because of what I read, it is a clear sign to me at least that Islam is not a peaceful religion. And when they say Islam is means peace, sorry, I have to disagree with that too because Islam doesn't mean peace, it means submission. And I think Muslims do need to stop saying that. There are people also who, Muslims, who keep saying that violence and terrorism and terrorists have nothing to do with Islam as well and that is, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, very false. It is also the opinion of many Muslim scholars that I have also listened to over the years. And those scholars are pretty honest and very straight to the point. They don't stroke egos or, you know, please the public so they can be liked. In my opinion, how do I put this without offending, but I will anyway. In my opinion, the terrorists are the true Muslims because they are taking the Quran literally and obeying what Allah is telling them to do. And the moderates are the hypocrites. And Allah is definitely, definitely not the God that I want to be following. Because Oh, sorry, the God that I follow and love tells us in Matthew 5, verse 44 to 45, to love our enemies, to bless them that curse us, to do good to them that hate us, and pray for them who persecute and use us, that we may be actually children of our Father who is in heaven. And that to me is a very, very, very vast difference from the God of Islam. So I will leave it at that. I probably just have offended many people, but this video is I've done because it is my opinion. And I suppose people will just have to deal with it. Thanks for watching.